Hello and welcome to the fifth video in our little chest series. Today we're going to UV unwrap this object. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go to Windows, Workspaces, and we're going to go UV Editing. So we click on this, and it's going to split our workspace up, so we now have this little UV editor here. So if we click on this, it's a bit of a mess right now, so we don't want that. So the first thing before we start UV editing is we want to add a checker square to this object. So if we go up to this little blue and white olive shape here at the top, our hyper shade, if we click that, mine's has opened on my second screen, so I'll just drag this in and we'll resize this a bit so we can still see what we're doing. Move some of these around. No, it's not going to happen. I'll just make it bigger again then. Now, this Fong 1 is the material that is currently on the object, so we want to add a different material. So we're going to click Checker, and it's going to give us this little box here. So if we move this over, now I find black and white really harsh on my eyes, so I change the colors on these. So I make this an orange, and we just move the slider up, and I change color 2 to a deep blue. Just move this down a little bit. Like so. There we go. Now, if we hold right click on this and we do assign textures material to viewport selection, it's going to add our checker up to the top here. We want to click on our object again and then right click on this and hold down right click and hover over assign material to selection. And as long as you've got this little box here, this little checkered circle ticked, that's going to display the texture on the object. So turning that on and off, you see it changes the texture. Now, we want to sort out our UV map because it's a bit of a mess right now. So to do that, we're going to go into face mode. We're going to start separating out some of the UV areas on the object. So we're going to pick out the faces on the lock first. So We'll select these all. I've accidentally selected some of the box there, so we'll just unclick that. And we'll get all of these picked out. And we'll do create, and we'll just do an automatic for now, which is going to split it up. And we'll hit W while we're over our UV, and we'll slide that off to the side to work with later. We're going to come to the back now and we're going to select the hinges and we're going to do the same again where we pick out all the faces on our hinges and we do create Automatic, and then again we'll hit W and we'll pull that hinge off to the side, get it out of the road for now. And then we'll get the second hinge. I'm just going to press Q and get rid of the little translate option now because it gets in the road a little bit when you're working with small faces like this. And it'll start wanting to move things rather than just select them. So we're going to slowly work our way around like so, picking out all of these and we'll do create automatic, we'll hit W again, we'll keep that next to the other hinge and now all that should remain inside our UV square is the box so if we do right click and face and then we just select a box over all these and we do create automatic and we hit W and we move that out of the road we know that the box is up there so we've got our UV split up but we've got different densities in our UV map. So the reason we use the checker square is one, we can see if spaces are stretched because this here is our texture in our UV square so we want everything to be square like this. If it's stretched like on this face on the hinge it means that it's going to stretch the texture you apply to this as well later on. So we don't want that to start. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick out these front faces I've got to use caps lock, not shift. If we use shift select, we can pick out these faces on the front here. And we can move these over with W. Now, 
this isn't very good because it's got things sitting funny this is all pulled off to the side and such so what we're going to do is we're going to do create and we're going to do planar now if we click that it's stretched it right out and that means that our plane's running the wrong way so if we hit control z and we do create and then we go to planar again but we click this little box on the side here now mines has appeared off screen again if we pull this back in we can do any projecting on the x or the y or the z axis now this is what plane is going to be placed that your UV is projected on. So ours was set to X and that didn't work so we'll try Z. If we hit apply now that's a bit better where it's now projecting it the way we want it to. So we hit close on that and we go UV shell. Now that's going to select that whole front area. And we hit W and move this along again. Now it's still stretching so the way we fix that is we just do a scale. So we hit R and we drag it out until we get these back to being square again so if we just keep going on the object now they're all looking square like so so now we've got that face we'll move this up and that's that sorted we're gonna do the top now so if we click on the UV shell for the top and we move this up we want the squares on this to match the squares on this in size so we're gonna click on the shell we're gonna hit R and we know how wide we want it to be so we're gonna pull it out until it's the same width and now we just need to get these nice and square again so we're just gonna zoom in on here a little bit until they all look about right now if we move this up with W We've got two UV shells here still, and we don't want that. We kind of want to keep our UV shells to a minimum, because the more UV shells you have, the more intensive it is for a game engine to render your object. So we're going to use Edge, and we're going to click on these two edges here, and these two edges here. Now, when you're in Edge Select, if you have your shells separate, the white lines are seams. It's highlighting both when I click here, but in this viewport it's this one edge. The reason it's showing as two is because it's the same edge, but on your UV it's just displaying where that edge is in relation to the two separate shells. So if we click on these two edges, and we go to the cut and sew tab here on the right, and we drop that down, and we do stitch together, that's going to stitch these two shells together and join them. So if we do that now, it's linked the two, and now the UVs run all the way around, our checker square runs nice all the way around the object. So we're going to do that again, but we're going to do that for the side panels now. So if we use our UV shell, it's going to pick out this whole side section. We're going to move this up, and we're going to take our other side and move this up here. So if we select both at once, because these are the same, and we did an automatic, which means that they're the same, each shell's the same, if we hit R and we scale it in both directions at once, because it's a square shape, we should be able to keep the squares pretty much the same, quite simply, on the texture. We spin around to see this side, so that's looking pretty much the same. So what we'll do again is we'll select the edge and we'll just do stitch together. And then we'll come back here, we'll do UV shell, we'll scale up until it matches, we'll just move it into place so we can just check, and we'll do edge, and stitch together again, and we'll get the bottom next, so we'll do UV and shell, now in here UV shell is just a straight option, in your modeling viewport you've got to go UV and drop down to UV shell. We'll click this, we'll pull this over, we'll just move our back panel off to the side for now. We'll get that nice and centered there and we'll just scale right out the way because we know how wide it needs to be and then we'll scale up until the squares on this side 
look about right. So they're still a bit stretched, so we'll just keep going until about there. And we'll move that down. And we'll do edge and stitch these together again. So now we're, we're cutting down the amount of UV shells we have pretty quickly here, where we've got the whole of the box down into one shell nearly already. And we'll do UV shell again. We'll move this up here. Now, this is the wrong way around. So this is as though our hinges are up and down the way, but our hinges go left and right. So what we want to do is, we want to do edge, and we'll double check where this is going to sit. So we want our hinges to connect to this bottom side to have them the right way up or the top but we're going to connect them at the bottom just for easiness so to do that we want to go UV shell now we could use E and try and eyeball it um, but there's a better way if we click this little drop down transform menu and we have we scroll down there's rotate 90 so this is going to rotate it by 90 degrees. Now already you see that that has flipped the UV shell there. So if we go to edge, that's going to connect it at the top. So we want to move it down the way now. We're just going to pull this down here and we're going to move both these UV shells again just to have a bit more space to work in. I'm going to click this one and we know how wide it needs to be because it needs to be the same width as the rest of the box. So we'll pull this right out like so and then we're gonna just scale up until it's square again and that looks about right now so what we're gonna do is, is edge again we'll close that transform window and we'll do stitch together so now if we do UV shell and W we'll just move this over here because it's done with now now we'll work on the lock next, so we'll select all the pieces of our lock and we'll just move them up the way. Now sometimes the camera gets a bit funny where it's not circulating on the lock. So when we've got the lock pieces selected, if we hover over our modeling window and we hit F, it'll focus, which means that the center of our viewport now is based on where the lock sits, so our camera pivots around the lock, makes it a bit easier to work with. So the front of our lock is going to be our starting point. So if we go to face and we pull this one out, now it's really stretched still, so we don't want that. We want to pull that out until it's looking square again, like so. And we just pull this down a little bit. There we go. Now, the texture density is different between here and here still. These squares are bigger than these ones, but we'll fix that after. We're going to just stitch this shell up first. So if we select these edges and we do stitch together, now it's done some funny stuff where this face here is really small here. So we want to undo that. We don't want to do that just yet. We want to do UV shells and we just want to move these around first. Now, this one's running the wrong direction, so we want to do a transform again on this, where we want to rotate it once this way, and we want to rotate this one once this way. And now we want to line these up where we need them. So, these faces are all linked, but to get an idea, we can scale the whole thing up to get an idea of where the distortion's happening that's stretching these out. So you can make things bigger to sort out the squares and get them nice and cubic again and then we can sort out afterwards what's going wrong with it and scale it back down. So we have a squint face here as well which we don't really want. So to fix that we go UV, we click on this one here and this one here. Now your UVs are like your vertex points. If we close the transform window and we go to the align and snap window, you get these little align options here. So what these basically do is, for all the UVs you have selected, you can either align them all to the lowest one, you can create a center point 
or you can align them all to the highest one. So align them to the top, the center of them all, or the bottom, and then again align them all to the right, the center, or to the left. So we're going to want to align to center here to pull both of these back into an even point between them. And then this edge is coming out further than this edge. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to select this UV here. I'll just press Q so we see what we're doing. And the one below it. And we're going to left align to get it nice and straight. And we're going to select this UV and this one. And we're going to hit right align to get it nice and straight. Now we don't want these to be totally straight but we'll fix that just in a minute. We're going to line up this shell next so we're going to bring this up and these two should be the same size so we're just going to scale this until it matches just about and then pull this out Now this UV shell here has worked out the way we want it to, so we can use this as a guide for the shell above. So if we take the, just to make this a bit easier to see, I'll move this shell down. We want this top shell to match the bottom one, so we're going to go to UV, we're going to pick this UV here on the top, and this one here on the bottom, and we're going to do right align, which is going to pull this one out to match the bottom. We'll do the same on the left hand side and we'll do left align. So now we've sorted out these shells a bit better. Now we can scale this shell down until it's going to fit where we want it to. So we need it to clip into here. So we're going to just pull this down a little bit more and it's going to sit right there. And then again with this one and we'll move it up scale it down a bit more and move it in slightly and slide it up. Now these two on the sides are looking pretty square as is which is good but we'll just double check that so there is a bit of funny stuff going on still where they're a bit too short so we'll pull that down and line these up Let's go around the other side here and we'll just actually we'll just pull this over like so and we'll stretch it out just a little bit and pull it back over and we'll scale these down again. Once you've got things square use this center scale because it'll stop any distortion it'll scale it on both axes at once. And now we'll do a stitch together and we've got everything nice and square on here. Now that we've got this shell we want to match the density on the rest of the box. So we need to make this smaller until it matches. So a way to do this is pick a square on here and pick a square almost nearby on this one and just get it until they look like they're matching. So I'm going to use this blue and this blue move the UVs around until it gives you a better idea. So that's about right now. So we'll move this up to here and just leave it. And now we'll work on the hinges. So we'll do these one at a time. We'll pull this hinge up, we'll come round the back and we'll just work on this. So we need the center face on our hinge which is going the wrong way to start. So the top edge is here. So we want to rotate this with the translate, we'll close the align and snap, open our translate, we want to rotate it once like so, and pull it up, and we want to stretch that out until everything's nice and square again. And now we want to move these around until our UV shells are all lined up. And we're just going to do translates on these as well just to get them nice and lined up the way we need them to be. Now sometimes you'll get little floating faces like this where the automatic has cut this out so the way to fix that is this here is where that's going to slot in so we'll just take these two edges, we'll close this transform, we do stitch together and it's going to stitch it into place like so. Now it's a bit squint so we're just going to again do UV 
can click these two and use our align and snap and we want them to line up to the left and then just to double check we'll take that whole line and we'll line it up to the right because these ones are nice and neat so we're going to pull them in line with the right hand side and that's that sorted now this here is a bit squint as well so we want to align that to the top because this was the untouched UV point this is the one that we changed so we want to pull that into line and then again with these we just want to align it to the top that's that nice and neat now and we'll just double check the other one was fine it pulled that face through so we want to align this to the left and we want to align these three to the top and get them nice and neat like that so now that we've got that sorted, we'll have a little look at these ones. So if we go into UV Shell, we'll scale this up so that we can see what's happening with it. We're going to hit F again, just so that we can get a better idea of what we're doing. And we're going to scale this down, because it's way too big. So one th I can't really see the squares on this, so we need to make it really big. And then... just scale it down a bit and then pull it back in like so so that's a bit better now and we're going to hit W and pull that back into place a bit, it's still a bit too big so we'll just scale it down a little bit more and we'll fix the UVs on this now so we just click on these two UV points and we center align and then just to double check we'll just center align these as well and then if we go to the bottom piece and we do the same, if we make this really big so we can see what we're doing we need to scale this down a bit and we'll just use the top one as a guide now so we want it to be about that big and we want it to be about that wide move it over a bit and scale it in again and now if we move this down the UVs on this one have actually turned out okay so we can just go back into here and we can edge select this and we can do a stitch together and that's one of our hinges done so now we're going to again we're going to match the density of texture on the rest of the object by shrinking this down until it looks about the same like that so now we'll just move this hinge over to here and get that out of the road and we'll work on this next hinge the final one so we'll take this one we'll find the top edge so now that we know that that's the top we'll take the shell and we will go into our transform menu again and we'll just rotate it right once and then we'll move all of these roughly where they need to sit and this is going to be the bottom and this is going to be the top so now we need to fix the stretch on this, so we'll just pull that out until it's square and then we'll move these back into place again just to get them where they need to be and we'll just do a quick check on the UVs on this so there's some funny stuff going on here with these ones so we'll just close the transform and we'll do a center and sort that out and then we'll just go over here and we'll do the same on this one where we'll just do a center to sort that out and we'll align these to a center as well and now we'll go into UV shell and again we're going to need to make this really big just to see what we're doing and zoom in and we'll just keep shrinking this until they're square like so and we'll pull this back in nope. back in like so and that's not quite square so there we go I'll use W and we'll just line that up like so there's a bit of funny stuff going on with the UVs on the side here so we'll just pull these back in line, we'll left align these and pull them back in and we'll sort this UV shell out now we'll get it in the center roughly and we'll scale it up and we'll scale it out and again just 
keep moving this around until we get it right and pull that down there's some funny stuff on the UVs on this side so we'll go to UV take these and we'll left align them and we'll stitch these together now so we can now go to UV shell and we want this shell to be the same size as our other hinge so if we zoom in and we move this over the other hinge and we use our two direction scale so it doesn't match quite yet it's not wide enough so we're going to move this down and it's in the center it's not wide enough because the edge pieces are almost the same so your UVs don't have to be completely identical but as close as is good so that's close enough now where we can there won't be a distinguishable difference in our textures so now that we've got everything's the same texture density we've got it down to the UV shells we want we don't want to stitch these back to the box because it's not going to work out nice. If we stitch these together we get all this overlap so when you put a texture on this the texture for the box will appear on the texture for the hinge which we don't want so we'll undo that. We want to keep these shells separate now but they're all really big so we could either scale these down and try and slot them into our one by one UV square so we want everything between in this checkered square here. A quicker way to do it is because we have everything on a similar scale we go modify and we go layout and when we click this it places everything into the UV square like so but we don't want to do that just straight away because it leaves these tiny little gaps which makes it really hard to texture this later so we want to go modify the little expansion box for layout and where it says shell padding we want this set to pixels and we want to change our shell padding to around 20 and hit apply. What that does is it puts a 20 pixel barrier of free space between any UV shells so you won't make mistakes when texturing or it's a lot harder to. So we've got a pretty optimized UV sheet where it's using as much of the UV sheet as possible so now what we want to do is we want to right click in the modeling window and go to object mode we want to open the hyper shade again and we want to go to our Fong one and assign initial group to selection and change it back we don't want that checker square on export so we can now go to windows we can go to workspaces and we can go back to modeling standard and we're back to our normal workspace which is going to change a few things when you change back to modeling standard. We've lost our channel box editor which we're going to need now and it's reset our modeling toolkit to a really small space. So to get our channel box back we go to windows, we go to general editors and we click the channel box layer editor. Mine's has appeared off screen so I'll drag it in and now you just want to drag this up until it clips into the bar like so. So it's in the wrong place so we want to move it over again now all the UV work appears in our history as well so we want to get rid of that, we want to do edit and we want to do delete history to get rid of that now we've got our UVs done and we've got our mesh all sorted out with no history on it so the next video we're going to cover the export and then it's, you'll be free to go into texture in your mesh thank you for watching